Hi guys, thanks for checking out the new video. Unity have announced MLAPI as the new in-house solution for multiplayer. In this video, I'll show you how to convert Invector's free package into an MLAPI based multiplayer. I'm also demonstrating this using a project cloner that's also free. It's a really handy tool for this sort of work. All the links will be in the description below. So we'll start with having imported the basic controller into your blank project. Next, we want to run the MLAPI Unity package to install that into our project. And lastly, we want to copy the project cloner folder into our assets folder for our project. Now with that done, we're going to make a blank folder called prefabs where we'll store our paleo controller and camera game objects. We'll drag both the player controller and camera objects from the hierarchy into this folder and create original prefabs. And we can go ahead and delete both of them from our scene. Next, we need to create a blank object in our scene and call it Network Manager for easy recognition. Then, we'll add the Network Manager component that came with our MLAPI package. The first thing we'll do on this component is set unit as our transport layer. This will add another script that we can leave alone for now. We also want to create a field in the networked prefabs list. Simply click the plus key for now. And we're going to drag our third person controller into that reference field and select default player prefab. Now we want to open up our player controller prefab and start adding the necessary components. We need to add networked object, network transform and networked animator from the MLAPI package. Then we need to drag the animator from our prefab into the reference field. This will give us a selection of tick boxes. Ensure that all of these are ticked. Once these are done, we need to add our own custom script. Create a new script called MLAPI underscore Invector Bridge. Ensure it matches what's displayed in my video so you can simply paste the code from the link below in your newly created script. Click on Create and Add. Once this has come in, you'll need to open up the script in your own editor. Simply paste the code, overriding all that was in the new script, and hit Save. If done correctly, your code should look like this. You will also need to edit the V third person input script to remove some of the functions to ensure our cameras work correctly. Here you can see the sections that I've taken out. We need to remove the function call for initialising the TPC camera. Then we need to actually go to the function itself, initialise TP camera in the V third person input script. You can see here I have removed it, as this is all now moved to the Invector bridge. Back in our player prefab, we need to now assign the prefab for our camera into the first visible reference field, leaving the second one blank. We can now save our prefab changes and head back into our scene. Next it's time to start testing. We can do this by selecting the tools top menu and opening the project cloner window. We can now create a new clone of our project. Once this is completed, we can open an instance of the clone project, allowing us to access both simultaneously. This will open in a second Unity, so it's handy to have multiple monitors to manage this. With the second Unity open, changes we make in one window, when saved, will appear in the other instance, or will prompt a reload of the scene. Saving the project also helps maintain synchronisation between project files. We must ensure that we've saved the changes for it to take effect on the second instance. Now we can test out our multiplayer scene. Hit the play button. No camera will render until we select our network manager and scroll down to the start host button on one instance. Once your player has spawned in, switch over to the second window and hit run. Then scroll down on the network manager and select start client. Your new player should land in the scene on top of your old one and you can now run both players in the world. Congratulations! You've now networked two instances of Invector's free locomotion kit. 
You can add more by creating a build version, but you'll need to create a function to let a user select the host or join option. This will be tackled in a later video.